please uh, welcome back. Please be seated, uh, everyone. Um, maybe close the door back there. Uh, Welcome back. We uh, will now have uh, three different uh, uh, roundtables. Uh, in these discussions, uh, the aim is to measure the importance of a uh, political vision when it comes to culture and its role in our uh, society. Um, as we know, more and more uh, culture policy are facing a, a, a paradox while they have to take into account the needs of a societies undergoing permanent change. They have to make this uh, society evolve towards a better culture and linguistic diversity, challenging uh, our usual references. Uh, here at this uh, symposium, um, this question will be tackled through three different geographical approaches. That's the idea. Not to oppose them or prioritize one of them, but in order to better understand the complex interaction between state, regional and local initiatives. Uh, we will start with the local and regional scale. Um, uh, and that's now I would like to welcome the first panel. Uh, Frédéric uh, Massili, welcome. Could I choose this chair? You are from La Villette uh, in, in Paris. Uh, Nina Hodneland from the uh, Kulturus Network, the network of Norwegian local culture houses. And uh, Rina Marianne Hansen from uh, Weissmeier from Oslo uh, Commune. Um, and uh, we will have now these three different round tables and at the end when we had all these three round tables we will open uh, 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 for question from the audience because you know things uh, are also linked it's not easy to 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 make three different uh, to split up this uh, this uh, debate uh, in three different uh, uh, panels so after all the three panels feel free to ask a question. And, and first to you, Frédéric Massidi, you are the artistic director of the Parc et Grand Halle de la Villette. Uh, you have worked there for many years. Uh, you have also been the artistic director of, uh, of, uh, at the Théâtre du Châtillon. Uh, and you gradu graduated from, huh? sorry? Yeah, and, and you gradu graduated from the French School of Political Science and have also been studying lyric singing, actually, uh, at the Paris Conservatoire. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I should ask you to sing in the beginning, but I don't do that. But when, when a region asks for idea what to do in Paris, uh, oh no, I very often recommend to go to Villette because it's not an obvious place for at least Scandinavian tourists to go. It takes some, it's a little bit, you know, it takes some time to, to figure out that this is a wonderful place, but I think it's really a wonderful place. Uh, and um, could you just first tell us a little bit about uh, yes. Villette uh, and also, uh, you know, how the importance of how these places are linking the suburbs also with, with the city? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go good morning. Good uh, morning, everyone. Um, yeah, La Villette is located in the 19th district of Paris, which is the northeast. Uh, and um, it's a very popular district uh, area, uh, and it's just as was on the largest park. It's a park, largest park of uh, of Paris as well, and it's open night and day, which is the the the, the other one. They are closed at uh, usually seven and uh, the night time uh, with the night time till the the morning. Um, it's created by the Ministry of Culture. Uh, it was uh, created in the eighties. So it's a 30 years uh, now uh, old uh, park and site of culture. And, uh, and this site is life in this abundance of this offer uh, and the diversity and the culture actors who make it up in constitute the cultural complex in accordance with the city's urban uh, The park of the 20, 21st century is a place of coexistence with energy, flows are forged between Paris center and the suburb. Uh, between world cultures and science, between entertainment and creation. With all these actors inter interconnections, but independent, we bring all crossover and cross over 10 million people uh, per year in all categories. 
social categories. So the, pro the, 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 the project, the cultural project of, the, of La Villette is an eclectic and demanding at the same time. Uh, and it covers the whole field of living and visual arts, music, dance, hip hop, theater, circus, and contemporary arts. Uh, the cultural program articulates spectacles and an exhibition of huge international uh, artists and festival based primarily on the promotion of young artists as well. We also are recognized internationally by sh for showing a typical and big scale uh, project presented outdoor and indoor. Uh, since more than 20 years, La Villette plays a major part in the field of contemporary circus and urban culture as well. Uh, we, ha we also have a residency program to support more than uh, 130 companies uh, per year, French and non-French. From, from its origin, actually, 30 years ago now, the question of the link between a cultural context and the people who live around uh, habis, has been posed as an argument of a voluntary cultural policy uh, of opening and crossing the different visitors of audiences. That's why you can find such different structures op operating at the site, like a museum of science, a tree auditorium, classical music, a museum for all instruments, a library, for five permanent orchestra, the National Conservatoire of Dance and Music, Le, La Grande Halle, which is uh, completely flexible to do any kind of show or exhibition, Two theatres, a circus area, six studio for residency, three concert halls, a place dedicated to children, three gardens, and, uh, and, more, rec and more recently, uh, different places for makers, fab lab, new design, and so on. At any time, everyone can find some point to do, to listen, to watch, to learn. That could be the beach of La Villette. So, um, to come back to our, uh, the topic of the, the day, how can cultural policy take tackle societal, is, societal is, issues? First of all, I always thought that uh, we should be pragmatic to be relevant. Uh, not too much theory, but more making lots of small scale experience in close collaboration with the artist. I, I will expose my thought in four points, if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So first, the, the first point is to, to believe to the strength of creation and innovation. We must pay attentive to what is being invented all over the world and be able to regard it as a, as a deep and, and sustainable artistic movement and to distinguish it from a simple fashion movement. I will develop this question in the workshop this afternoon because it deserves more than one minute. But let's say that basically, we should trust to, to the creativity of the artist everywhere in the world and be aware to recognize their talents when they are young and still alive. <laughs> Second point, give to the artist a central, ro central role within the, within the city as a creator and as a facilitator of encounters with new audiences. I strongly, st strongly think that the, only, the artist is the best ambassador of its arts. Therefore, we must rely on its know-how, know -how, its experience, its ability to create new forms, new means to touch the audience, young people as the others. I would like to insist on that point. First, we should support artists in their creative process to or to encourage the emergence of talents. And second, we, sh we should work with them as facilitators to meet the public. The public. Cultural institu institutions cannot on our own answer to the question to the of the public the development without relying on the work, the complexity and the creativity of artists to reach and involve the public, especially those who are far from the culture. This central question Underlies the implementation of an emphasis policy sorry, to support the creation and to share production tools through residency, training, and interdisciplinary collaboration, participative projects, tryouts, and meetings with the audience, etc. 
The place of the artist can only be understood in the relationship between the weights we give him to produce, the crucial support to find other partners, and the possibility to meet other public all through a workshop, all through a show. The third point. We need to take the time to make it, to make it as, as well as possible. So the, point, the, the, the thing is the point. A cultural project needs time to produce sustainable efforts, bringing together the different cultures, social, educational, and economic local actors takes years to show its relevance because it's necessary to convince, to pursue, and to give the desire to make and return to create a strong link. As institutional demands are often contra contradictory and sometimes out of the reality of a socially, sociological environment, the policy of the media below is often unproductive in the long term. So, I prefer long-term action with a true needs evaluation and with defined and achievable goals in a given time, rather than a media strategy that can blind the people without really working in depth. Fourth point, promote the access to, the, to culture for everyone. As presenter, producer, uh, or artistic director, we should facilitate the meeting between artists or artists' works and the public, especially those who are far from it. In La Villette, we put diversity and co-education co of audiences at core of its mission and carry out many actions intended to support the diversity of public around two strong axes, cultural programming and the park with the, its urban environment. The public development is declined through the, a path composed by discovery and personalized reception during the, the spectacle and exhibition, workshops or artistic practices or critical analysis, artist meetings, preparing and training of the educational relays and the social field, but also ed ecological gardening and of course an adapted tariff, tariff policy. Like many theaters or museums, in the world, we have many tools to engage specific communi communities in our mediation efforts, and we work a lot with cultural, educative or social such as associations, schools, children's centers to facilitate their approach of arts and culture. Mm -hmm. when, addre when addressing a so-called distant public, it is necessary to work on small scale, in small groups, in order to build public loyalty. With artists in residency, for instance, we do a strong work of mediation among young or disadvantaged audiences by involving them in uh, awareness workshops or within the crea creative process. It could be a very long project which uh, requires a strong commitment of each artist, institution, partners and participants value the re real desire to meet an emancipation. Mm. We also work strongly on the very young audience, workshops, shows, or playgrounds. We use the park a lot uh, also, especially uh, on the spring and the summertime, to present works and performances and to make it easier for the public to access them. And more recently, um, re we create a concept, a new concept, but may maybe I, I, I can uh, Take that after. After, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's I'm a new thing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so so far, and I I, I go to the you Nina Hodland. You you is the CEO of uh, Norsk Kultur, has, uh, whose network, the network of Norwegian culture houses, is an uh, interest organization for Norway's 124 actually professional run culture uh, center. Uh, and and uh, culture for everyone was was one of the point from from Frederick here, and I guess that's also really you know the basic and also the most important thing you you are working with in your cultural houses yes actually now we are 126 oh yeah. houses okay. yeah. we, we just got two new members so that's um, that's that's fantastic um, just very short um, uh, well the, the the cultural houses Kulturhus, or cultural centers uh, it's li linked with the, the, the history of uh, cultural policies. Um, the organization was founded in 1999, but the, um, 
the idea of a community house or a cultural center, an arts venue is, is of course much, much older. Just very shortly, um, there are 126 members, uh, so I'm representing that umbrella organization, um, and our mission is to uh, to um, to work for the members. Um, I'm <laughs> I was before <laughs> before you were presenting. I I was very um, proud when I wrote the notes um, that I was going to tell you that we have 13 million people visiting the Norwegian. Uh, cultural houses per year and yeah. then you shared <laughs> was Sorry. it 10 million <laughs> yeah. uh, for one house um, so then well that shows the difference between France and mm. Norway but we are very it's proud of those several houses yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Several houses. yeah. maybe 126 houses no? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but but those those 13 million uh, per year that says a lot uh, 13 million that does not mean 13 million uh, attending a concert or attending um, a, show. Uh, a show. Uh, those numbers are, are considerably lower. That's around 2 million uh, in total. Uh, up to 13 million is also cinema and all other in, uh, activities included. But it shows the importance of these houses in the community because where would those 13 million, it's not 30 million people, but where would where would they go if they didn't come to us mm. 30 million times? Um, should I say a little bit more about, yeah? Uh, there are um, members, uh, that it's the, the centers that are the members. So it's 126 members from Longyearbyen uh, to Lesha, Lillestrøm, and Lyngdal in the very south. Uh, those of you that are familiar with yeah, those places. Um, 126, that means that uh, about one third of all Norwegian municipalities have a cultural center, culture. Yes. So that's, that's an important thing. Um, and um, what do these centers consist of? Um, most of them. Some of them are, um, are um, venues like Stavanger Concert Hall, mm. uh, large and um, internationally known venues. Others are small, local, regional. Uh, very, very many of them consist of both cinema and a stage, uh, a venue. Uh, so they are combined. Um, very, very, very short, from 1945 to 1975. Uh, you could say that there was um, a period of um, uh, dissemination of culture, or um, high culture maybe, through uh, the institutions we have in Norway, Riksteatre, Riksgallerie, Rikskonsertene, um, and the um, community houses or the cultural centers, the arts venues, then became arenas for um, these institutions mm. so that everyone, so back to what you uh, originally asked, so that everyone all over Norway, not only in Oslo or in the other main cities, could um, take part and experience uh, arts and culture. Mm. Um, and then what we call community houses, some funsus, yeah? Uh, that's... Um, both in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, those were these uh, venues for the um, um, the, the local um, uh, culture. Uh, and then there's a period, you could say, of decentralization after the 1975 uh, and, and decentralization of the um, um, of, of where where uh, of who is in charge. Uh, and then in the 80s and 90s, uh, there's maybe, maybe you could call it a new wave, um, where um, you see that the municipality, um, the economy for culture, mm. uh, or the, the funding is uh, coming from, from the mm. government is, is, um, is lower. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we also, some people call it a, a vague of cultural houses, the venues uh, that have been built 
fantastic venues during the period of 2000 until till now. So those are the buildings themselves that I'm talking about. I think I should maybe yeah. stop there. Mm -hmm. and we, we go to the next, uh, Rina Marian Hansen, you are the Waste Mayor for Culture and uh, Sport here in, here in Oslo uh, from the Labour uh, Party. Um, uh, how, well, what is the uh, priorities now for, of, uh, when it comes to culture and, and, and the capital? Uh yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that as a city, as the largest city in Norway or and as the capital, we often say that the city policies are local and global. Um, because very often, and especially in the field that I'm responsible for, the culture field, we see that we are very close to our inhabitants and can access and assess their needs and deliver on them as public services. But we also have a lot of global connections, both in the artist community as such, but also as a city with our, uh, with, with our colleagues, in, colleagues in other European capitals, for instance. So uh, a lot of time I learn more from my uh, colleague in Stockholm or Copenhagen than I do from discussing with the national level in Norway. And that, I think that's also quite interesting that a lot of the cultural policies are developed really locally and you we also steal from each other or from mm. city to city um, one of the most important things for me uh, be and, and for the new city government is to having a culture sector and art sector that's accessible for all it's very uh, I re really relate to what you said from Paris that it's possible for everyone to have good cultural experiences and but also to um, develop their own artistic skills. Um, that's one of the reasons that uh, a great priority for, for us has been to, to prioritize children, both uh, regarding children's theater, developing our libraries, uh, and also the overall cultural infrastructure. Another important um, thing for us is to take our responsibility for the very large artist community that's living here in Oslo. Um, I think that we are hosting the, sit the nation's largest community of artists. I think this is quite similar, at least in the other Nordic countries, that you see that the artist communities are really the strongest in the capitals. Because of that's, that's where the cultural infrastructure is, that's where the market is, that's where the audience is. Mm. So, um, Developing Norwegian culture and having a good uh, artistic economy to be able to live from being uh, a culture worker, worker, an artist in Norway, you're really dependent on us, Oslo, taking a great responsibility. So the most important tools in my toolkit is, one of them is providing cultural infrastructure as such. Both uh, reasonably priced uh, studios, show places, ateliers, uh, we have, um, for being such a small city, we have very large uh, artist community and we also experience now that we have very much international attention. A lot of eyes internationally are going in our direction. Both because of what's happening with the new mu museums in 2020, both the Monk and, uh, and the National Museum, but also what's going on in the contemporary art scene in Oslo right now. Um, we have increased the number of municipally owned studios in Oslo for a number of years. The paradox is that the increase of studios available also increases the demand. Uh, so you see that there, there is actually a possibility, but then even more want to come in. Uh, the city has a very large art commission. Uh, the city of Oslo puts uh, our art commissioning scheme puts aside half a percent of the total city of inv investment budget mm. for art commissioning. Uh, usually what municipalities do is they say 2% of each investment um, of each building. But we have turned it from 2% to half a percent and then not from the investment in buildings but from the total investment budget. Meaning that the culture sector also taps into the investment in roads and trams and uh, water and a lot of the things that are really uh, expensive to build, very good for the culture. 
Uh, this means that the city of Oslo actually spends about 50 million Norwegian kroner. What's that? Six million euros or something like that? Mm. Annually uh, on buying, in buying arts. Okay. Different things. Both uh, in public spaces, buildings inside and out, but also in more uh, temporary projects. Um, and then finally, we are building also, as you know, these new houses. That's not culture houses, but a great new, large new museum for our monk collection. And also a new, very big pu public library in, in Bjørvika. Um, they will also give us a new opportunity to use culture uh, in marketing the city internationally and in also developing the attention that we already have. Mm. But also be new multi-purpose spaces, meeting sites for the, the inhabitants of Oslo. Mm. So as we heard, new cultural houses, houses are popping up all over Norway. In Oslo, it's a lot of new art cultural venues who are uh, both city and the state who you know, right now are, are constructing. And, 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 and then I go to you, uh, Fredrik, in, in uh, um, uh, what have you been you know, doing you know, to, to involve the local community uh, in the suburbs and you know, around so many people living there? Uh, yeah. uh, you know, how, did, how have you been involving them in, in, in that they also should get a kind of ownership to, to their uh, kind of locally placed uh, culture houses? Yeah. So we, we, we do uh, l l l strong work with the locals, with the people uh, who live around the site of La Villette. Um, and um, so it's not only to, to um, um, ask them to, to come to, to see a show, but it's also uh, different works. And um, uh, through the residency, for, in for instance, program, uh, but we... we we work a lot with the artists uh, because, as I said, the, the, uh, the, the best ambassador of his arts the, are the, the artists. So, mm. so where you can um, work with any, uh, when is available, uh, when you, you, you can do that, when you can work with an artist uh, with a, in a school, for instance, or for a children's center or something like that. Mm. Uh, it's easier to communicate, to, to, to make something like uh, um, uh, link uh, between uh, between uh, the work, his work, but also uh, with the venue, because it's it's a way it's a way it's a good way to also uh, as the, the people they can trust uh, not only the artist but and the work but also the, the venue and if they come once they can a second time and a third time and etc 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 it's a long term mm. it's not it's not one shot you can do that you can you cannot say okay uh, we, we we have a beautiful show and we we uh, it's for children for the suburbs and you do one shot and it's okay mm -hmm. no it's not that you should work on the it's a long term uh, uh, work so it takes time it needs as i said it's a it's a long term work and we have to work with the all the actors the locals the who works in the social educational uh in culture and all the people uh around the venue and uh you need time to to um, create a link uh between you and us and them mm. Is that a challenge, uh, Irina, to, 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 you know, to, to involve the local community the right way so we also get the cultural houses or the art houses uh, that they really would like to have? I think that's always a challenge for, for uh, public policies to get our inhabitants even more involved. Um, I'd like to say or, or give you two examples. Last year we opened a new library for young people only or only in Tayen for children between 10 and 15 only, adults are forbidden. Um, and in developing this, this is a, an idea we plainly just stole from Stockholm, where they have Tio Treton. Um, uh, and in developing this library, the librarians in Tøyen, they ask the children locally in the school, what do you want this house to be? Mm. Not, 
us as librarians, us as municipality, us as adults, saying that we are making a youth library. It's going to be like this. But the children were actually involved in making it, saying they didn't want bookshelves in a library. Uh, the most important thing was that there were going to be enough grown-ups. And you were thinking that children of 15 wanted to be left alone. What they said, we want grown-ups mm. to be there to see us. Uh, and they wanted to have the ability to, to make food. None of these things uh, would have been things that we have, would have figured out without asking them. So we have, a, so, uh, we have a lot of tools that we can use to involve people locally in developing their houses. Another library that we opened last year also in Furuset is more of what you call a, what you call a culture house, other places I I in Norway. A combined library, cafe, um, local meeting rooms, everything. Based on the very, very local needs described by the population. So I think that we are, uh, we have some best practices, but I think you can always be better <coughs> at involving people locally. Mm. Nina, uh, the times are running here, but I will give you, uh, you know, uh, the word here to just to say something about what what role do the do these cultural houses, you know, what role do you want them to play, or do you think they will play yeah. in I'll, the I'll future? I'll link it to what, what we're talking about here, mm. um, and you were talking about talent uh, earlier on, and and involving um, people locally. Um, there is a program. Uh, called Kultur Spirit, Young Growing Talents. It's um, funded by the Ministry of, of Culture, um, and, and it's a fantastic program, uh, giving uh, young talents in the regions, in working locally with the arts venues, with the cultural houses. Uh, they can work with the professionals. I mean, the, the, the venue is a professional venue. It's uh, professional lights, stage, everything. And they can develop their talent there. This is not talent Norge, yeah, talent Norway. Uh, it's it's below that. Um, it's it's um, uh, a way of um, of educating them, involving the local community, and and <coughs> it's fantastic because these performances, uh, these shows, they're 100% sold out. Um, uh, it's not something that you you know you send your son or daughter to ballet class and you go there and you applaud only your son or your daughter and you don't look at the rest. These are professional uh, shows um, and it could be book concerts and it could be um, uh, performing arts and we're very grateful for this program and this is the role that the culture whose cultural uh, centers want to take. Mm. Uh, they want to be active. They want to program because uh, we're not going into details. But the uh, cultural centers are also um, uh, a house that you could rent. Uh, so there are lots of touring productions, etc. And of course, they will continue to be that because that's what where, where their uh, funding comes from um, uh, mainly. Uh, and they, uh, but they would like to actively take a lead and to give back to the local community. And this uh, Kultur Spirit, Young Growing Talents, uh, is we're, we're really proud of uh, this first year mm. and what the houses and, uh, and the talents have achieved. Thank you so far. Uh, the time is running. We have used our time, but it will be possible to, to ask you some question afterward when we will uh, wrap up uh, uh, this, uh, all this discussion. Uh, so we, we will... We will uh, uh, have a new panel here. Uh, I will welcome up uh, Anne Talino. Vous êtes où? Vous êtes là? You are uh, working at the Institut Français. Um, and uh, Olaf Thomason, uh, where are you? You are there. Welcome. And, uh, and Helen Campbell, uh, who is the EU, EU ambassador to Norway. So we will, uh, the next team here, who, which is also linked with what we already talked about, is cross-culture cu cross dialogue and, and, and policy making. Um, and I will start with you, Helen Campbell. You, you have been the ambassador for, from the EU in Norway since 2013. Um, and, and what is the, the EU's role when it comes to, uh, 
when it comes to culture, you know, now we see, you know, now they want to make an energy union, you know, we have different kind of pillar, which is very important. Uh, what is the culture place here? Well, first of all, th thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and um, congratulations to the Institut Francais on today's event. People often get surprised when they see the European Union on a platform on culture in Norway. Yeah. I think what I may <laughs> say to you actually will, will surprise you as well. Um, people have touched on diversity, and if I can start by paraphrasing the great European supporter of culture, Placido Domingo, who's the head of the Europe and Austria organization, he said we should see cultural diversity as Europe's great asset, not as, its li as a liability. And I think that, for me, is one of, one of the starting points, that diversity is important. Um, the European Union had, has had a role in culture since 1992. It is mainly a matter for the member states, but what we would bring to this is to preserve the cultural diversity we have, also to look at our heritage. And um, Jean-Marc Rieb said it excellently this morning. I think he must have had my speaking notes on the <laughs> economic <laughs> side of culture. <laughs> uh, you know, culture has continued to grow during the financial crisis. Um, it is 3.8% of the European workforce is now employed in culture. So it has an economic aspect as well. And I think, just think of why people come to Europe. You know, we look at our diversity and our differences. When you come from the outside, you actually see what pulls us together in a cultural sense. And I think that is an amazing pull factor. Just to say why a little, a little bit on how it works with Norway, if mm. I may. Norway is part of the European Union's Creative Europe program. And um, we're also, Norway is also very much involved in the work we do on cultural heritage. And I see the Deputy Mayor sitting here. In 2015, we had the European Cultural Heritage Award Ceremony in the town hall here. Who received an award there? Eidsvoll, where the constitution was signed. Um, that for its conservation work. Since then, we've seen the Friends of Storfjord in, uh, the, in, in Norway receive work for the way the community has preserved its local heritage. Um, I could also give other examples. There are Norwegian authors who've been translated. There is the first Latvian to Norwegian translation of a book on heavy metal, of all things. Um, two winners of the European Prize for um, Literature. We have also um, Ida Hegatsi-Heya, who won the European Prize for Literature a, a couple of years ago. And on top of that, we have um, a lot of work with Norway on the film and TV sector. Walking into this building, I saw this lying around. Just last week, we had a European documentary festival here, which we um, has now been taken over by the cinema ticket here, but we work very closely with that. So we have a rich and diverse set of cultural cooperation with Norway, mm -hmm. which is about building bridges. It's about helping Norway access European partners. And I think we've seen that be very vibrant. And it's something I've certainly... So the mention of my job, I didn't expect to have when I came here. Mm. And it's been a real pleasure to see that. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Talino, you are the uh, general director of the Institut uh, Francais. You have been at since 2014. And, and you are all over the world. Yeah, you know, different institutes. Um, it's a cultural network all over the world. And 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 what, what role does the Institut Français play? You know, is is it to is your main goal to 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 promote the French culture? Um, exactly. So the the goal, the main goal of Institut Français is to promote uh, French culture and language worldwide. Sorry for French culture, French language today on my in my mouth. Uh, as well as uh, to promote exchange, uh, cultural exchange with other culture. It has been previously mentioned that in France we like um, sophisticated uh, administrative construction. Uh, I think in our, in this case, uh, it's a bit of, of one because we, Institut Francais, are um, an agency in Paris under um, the, con the guidance of uh, foreign minister and ministry of culture. And we are 150 people in Paris. And our first partner in the world are the Institut Francais Worldwide. Uh, there is uh, 97 Institut Francais and, and also the um, network of Alliance Francaise. And there is uh, 800 Alliance Francaise uh, in the world. But we also work with uh, international partners. For example, we are responsible for um, the special invitation to France in the 
Frankfurt Burmesse, which is the most important uh, book fair for um, um, editing worldwide, as well as we are responsible for uh, building the French pavilion in Venedig, uh, well, for the, the artist Xavier Veillon in this case. Mm. So we are, um, I would say, like in Paris, like a, a head of, of uh, the head of a network, but this is not our network, because in this case, uh, uh, the Institut Francais Norway is depends from the embassy, but we really work hands to hands. Mm. And... Um, our main goal is to promote French culture worldwide. Um, it's very important for us, well, French culture is very well known in the world, but um, mostly well known for the patrimonial aspect of the French culture. So we work uh, to try to give, um, to um, underline the modern and innovative aspect of the French culture, which means, for example, to make the promotion of emerging artists or talents internationally. Uh, we are also very eager um, to promote uh, new fields like uh, digital fields, uh, virtual reality, to give also um, tools, innovative tools to be able to promote French culture like culture tech, culture tech that I think you have uh, in Norway. Um, and we play also we want to play uh, an important role in the exchange of uh, with culture of other countries um, ex cultural exchange are really one of the dna i would say of french culture um, you can see when you come in france especially in paris you can see culture from all over the world and this is really one of our main assets in the world we play sometime um, institut francais political role insofar when we have a cultural cross exchange for example we have a cross tiers with Colombia this year and um, Colombia is a state which is right now in a, a very um, historical moment of uh, a very uh, the special moment of its history and when we promote Colombian culture in the world in Paris or in France, uh, it says something also politically. And mm. today, especially, yeah. our thought goes also to Colombia because they had a great disaster. They had a disaster this mm. weekend. Um, but can you f can you create your own policy, or do you have to follow the you know the you know what the minister minister of culture are are are, are telling you to do? We all. In, in the case of, uh, of uh, complete foreign policy, we work then we with a foreign minister. Mm. But uh, when, for example, Colombian in this particular case is very eager to show a cultural side which is far away from its image in the world of uh, crime, drugs, narcos, and everything. So we work a lot on um, um, exchange with civil society, on the dialogue, uh, uh, with the post uh, agreement with the FARC, with the Nobel Prize that you had with President Santos. So we, we tried to put this new image of Colombia on a cultural way in, in the light in, pa in, in France this year. And it's going to be, uh, it will start in, in France in June. Right now it's the French years in Colombia. Mm. So I would say this is, um, this is a joint work between Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Foreign Minister, and Institut Francais. Mm. And we also want to play um, a role on the European side, which is very important for us on many levels. First, because uh, um, there is, uh, for internationally, for culture, there is in Europe many festivals, many structures, like Théâtre du Rond-Point, La Villette, or... or a, a, more, a lot of them which are uh, prescriptive internationally. Uh, if you want to promote books, you go to Frankfurt Cinema, you go to um, Cannes or music, you go to Glyndebourne. So we have, this is a very important territory for us, Europa. And then we have also, we develop regional programs um, like we did uh, last year in Scandinavian with music. Uh, which was very um, successful and we would like to do to pursue or like we are going to do this year with dance in Oriental Europa 
where about 10 countries in Sud and Ost Europa, um, we, we will show um, more than 13 um, groups or, or solo in dance uh, in, in, uh, in Europa when we're going to have the circulation and diffusion. Um, Euro uh, Europe is also very important for us because we develop European program. We've been uh, the head of a program for, um, in cinema for developing a new European, European audience. Um, and we've been working in a group with 10 other countries and uh, we are very proud to be in the third years of developing this uh, platform for European cinema, CINED. And also because we are working with uh, other countries uh, abroad, for example, we are right now uh, developing um, a program of young leaders in Africa with Goethe Institute. Uh, which is going to, my be name is going to be Lab Africa, or we are also working right now in a program um, that we may submit to the European Commission uh, inside Europe in destination uh, in Kiev, um, which is going to be more a program with debate of ideas or promoting um, French expertise and influence and bit like we had in the night of, of the ideas, La Nuit des Idées, mm. um, towards civil, civil society in Ukraine, for example. Mm. So that's all kind of different. Thank different. you so far. Uh, uh, Olaf Thomasson, you are half uh, French. Uh, you is active in the public debate, and uh, you also been the deputy leader in the Norwegian Liberal Party uh, some time ago. And, uh, the theme here is, you know, dialogue, uh, cross-cultural dialogue and policy making. And, and, you know, you are a European from, from how do you see Europe, uh, uh, you know, I'm, develop I'm, 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 its I'm culture right now? Hello, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the, I'm the product of a cross-cultural uh, merger between Norway and France, so that's probably why I'm sitting here. Mm. Um, I was thinking about this when I saw the uh, when I saw the headline before this uh, um, debate in terms of uh, what is culture, uh, because I, I mean, being half French, uh, having studied in France and worked in France, I was expecting something of what we have seen today in terms of talking not now actually, but uh, earlier today in terms of talking about culture as sort of a high institutional and, and high level thing. Whereas um, another perspective could be to look at culture as to how we actually uh, live together in terms of any type of civilization without intercultural development is the civilization that will, will, will fail. Um, and, and whether that is on a high level um, with, with, with the help of, of the municipality or international institutions or whether that is on, on interhuman level, um, uh, I don't know, but I, I think also it's important to discuss uh, the lower levels. And on that terms, I think it's important to look at how does um, a civilization uh, develop and involve uh, with the, the aspects of other cultures coming in, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's French culture or whether it's uh, uh, older European culture or whether it's African culture and so on and so forth. And I think you see al already in Norway that many of the more popular cultural aspects in Norway is based on non-ethical Norwegians. Carpe uh, Diem uh, is one aspect, Nikon Bins, which is a big uh, uh, pop group in Norway. So I, I think um, uh, one important aspect is to look at culture as a way of a civilization to work in general and it will not evolve if it doesn't get uh, um, add-ons from, from other cultures, whether it is you know, European, which is very easy, French and Norwegian is, is, is quite similar, African, Indian, Asian is, 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 is another thing. So, uh, and that is, I think, that is a way of looking at culture and civilization from bottom up rather than from, from top down. Mm. And uh, uh, Helen, uh, do you think, uh, you know, when you hear what Olaf say here, also the, the cross-cultural identity, will, will it come from, from inside of, of Europe or, or, or from the outside? Um, 
I, I think it has to be both. I mean, I grew up just outside London, so I grew up in this very rich thing where we have just what you mentioned, Olaf, these cultures coming together. And I think one of the things we're starting to look at in our European foreign policy now is how to bring culture into that. It was mentioned before, it's a way of tackling integration, it's a way of countering radicalization. So it has a very important role to play in time and also in integration. One thing I've really enjoyed in Norway, I didn't mention, is that we have a little town, Lamsos, in northern Trondelag, competing with Berlin and Brussels and Gateshead on a project called Singing Cities. <laughs> and that is peak taking people from school age into culture, into music, and then giving the chance to have the European exposure <laughs> and to learn from what others are doing. And that is certainly something which is not just about Norwegian culture, that's really about mixing. And I think that's extremely important to keep that diversity as part of that. And if people have, at an early age, the chance to be part of culture, they're less maybe intimidated by it, mm -hmm. it's something they're part of, we take it from there. Mm. But Olaf, do, do, do you think when we see these now waves of immigration uh, also to Europe, do, do, do you think that will change the way we are uh, you know, doing policy making also when it comes to culture? I hope so. And I don't see any waves. <laughs> I think we've been talking about waves for a long time, but that's another question. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, as a small point, uh, we, we talk a lot about Donald Trump and his walls, and we see that Europe is also building walls where they are not that physical. Mm. We, 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 we're doing it in other ways. But yes, I, I certainly hope so. I, I, I think that given that we will have an evolution of the European society based on also other cultures, uh, we will have to, within a generation or two or three, we will have to accept and like uh, that uh, our culture will be a totally different culture only in, in, in a few generations. Uh, our languages will be, will be somewhat different. Uh, um, and, and I think that's I think that's a necessity, mm. and on that basis, obviously the electorate as well. Because I mean, what is policy making? Policy making is politicians being elected to pol to make politics, mm. and they will be elected by people, and those people will change, mm. uh, and so will the po politicians, and thereby will the policy making, uh, and and uh, hopefully being uh, having sort of more of an international global uh, uh, view, uh, one will both accept and embrace that one's culture and thus the policy making will be more of a global <coughs> nature mm -hmm. rather than a very local nature. Mm. Uh, and I, w I was a correspondent in Paris when uh, former president Nicolas Sarkozy has this crazy idea to, to, to start uh, to, to try to define the French uh, uh, identity. Uh, it was a long, complicated debate, and also the, <laughs> the you know the idea to create a museum of, of the French history was also a kind of impossible uh, project. Uh, uh, but how how important is it to to identify to define our identity to to be able to create uh, the good cultural politic? <laughs> this is a very vast question. Um, uh, I, I don't know if uh, the, the idea of having a, a museum of French history would have been so crazy. It's, it's been like, inf it, it has given inflammating debate about it, but um, many of you may know the, the Museum of German History in Berlin, which is a very, very beautiful museum. So mm. I, I don't think it's impossible to do such a uh, museum. But um, to come back to your question, this question is still very actual because we've had in this electoral campaign, which you've been uh, mentioning, this is, uh, there is, it has been so far very few cultural issue, uh, but one has been, uh, uh, a debate between two candidates was the definition of uh, French culture. What does it mean? And um, I say, in, in, in my position, in my role, <coughs> I won't take side on, on this issue, but the only thing that I can say is that it is our duty, our goal, to make the promotion on what is actually French culture. And for example, this winter, the two most uh, books which have been sold in France was one, it was the Prix Goncourt from Leila Slimani. Leila Slimani comes is the second generation of uh, North uh, African uh, coming in France. And uh, the second one was from uh, Gael Fay, and uh, Gael Fay comes from Africa, and this book 
tells the story of, uh, of this country near Rwanda and with all the background of the Rwanda, is the story of, of his childhood. And those two books have sold hundreds of thousands of, uh, of in France, and they have been huge, huge success of libraries. So at the Institut Francais, we will clearly make the promotion of those books, which to us tell story which are whole parts of French uh, national culture. Mm. Well, I think that's very. I think you are, you're touching on a very interesting point, which is also very um, important in Norway as we speak. Um, we have we have two very important speeches being given on that note. Uh, speeches, not necessarily speeches, but at least you know notes or whatever you call them in English. Um, you had the Norwegian king who gave a very good speech in terms of what is Norwegian. And I said, Norwegian is, um, uh, Norwegian, Norwegians are people who love men, who love women, who love both. Uh, there are people who eat goat cheese, who eat um, 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 some Indian food. Now I don't remember it, but you know, yeah, you know. Mm. Uh, and so he talked about Norwegians and Norwegian culture as being a mix of, of a lot of things in a very tolerant, very open way. Um, uh, so that's one side of it. The other side was that the Minister of Culture is not here uh, at the moment, unfortunately, but she put out a, a, a note on Facebook uh, in, uh, this Christmas trying to define what is Norwegian, where is it sat in her Norwegian traditional folk uh, uh, costume and talked about Norwegian culture uh, as being, you know, eating goat cheese, uh, eating this particular chocolate when we go skiing, um, and so on and so forth. This is very sort of uh, hardcore Norwegian. However, all my no all the Norwegian friends wi wi who are, you know, they don't have necessarily the same skin color as me. They haven't been here for five generations, only two. Uh, however, they pay the taxes, they have been to military services, uh, they do everything else. They don't feel that that particular chocolate or that particular goat cheese is their Norwegian culture. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and that's why I think it's, it's, it's hard to define what is French or what is Norwegian culture? Because because it's like shooting on a on a, on a moving target. Mm. It's always evolving, mm. uh, and we have a, we have an initiative also from this particular government doing more or less the same thing that Sarkozy tried to do, which was I think was shot down <laughs> for for a good reason from other parties in, in the parliament. Um, but 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 defining one one country's uh, culture or, or identity is is just like you and me. We are evolving. Mm. Uh, I'm not the same as I was 20 years ago. I hope I, I'm not. Some parts of it I would like to have still, but I, I think <laughs> I'm evolving. Uh, and, and neither is a civilization, neither is a country. Uh, and it t goes back to you know having influences from all over the world, having influences from England, from France, from Africa, from wherever, mm. and, and, and thereby moving. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's have a question from the audience here. Uh, Monsieur Rib. Tu peux traduire euh, Quand on parle de la stupide idée, vous avez raison de dire de Nicolas Sarkozy, de, de parler de l'identité française, je crois que la fierté de ce pays, c'est d'être un pays monde. Um, you are right to say that the stupid idea of uh, Nicolas Sarkozy to, de, to try to define a national identity. Uh, what French people can be proud of is uh, to be a world culture, culture monde. I don't know how it's translated in English. Well, oui, je crois que c'est la chose pour tout le monde. Mais on dit que Paris est une ville monde. Moi, ce dont je suis fier, c'est que des artistes euh, viennent en France. Et c'est vrai qu'on est assez privilégié pour euh, aider la culture. Moi, je suis très fier quand des artistes du monde entier et qui ne sont pas français viennent en France et font cette culture sur ce territoire qui leur offre un peu plus peut-être de liberté. C'est uh, ça. Pardon. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so Paris is a, a world city and what he could be very proud of is when he saw that so many artists from all over the world is coming to France. Um, and he's uh, very happy to see them creating in France because perhaps uh, Paris, France is giving a little bit more of freedom. Sans que ces artistes soient français. Without, of course, even if they are not French. Je crois que 
la culture ne peut être qu'une culture qui rassemble les gens. Et s'il doit y avoir euh, une culture française, c'est la culture qui montre qu'il y a une mixité indispensable euh, et que c'est la culture de l'humanité. Um, culture could only be a culture who is gathering and uh, um, I lose the word. and um, I'm, I'm losing. I'm sorry. Uh, It was too long. And my yeah, French is too complicated. No, Even no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not a, a professional translator, sorry, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little bit, but it's, uh, a, it's a nice to improvise. A culture can only be the c culture that mirrors the yeah. people uh, in dissemination. Vous avez fait for Sciences Po, vous? Oui. Traduisez. Thank you. So, so uh, Helen, that's a little bit also the uh, kind of key uh, key question for uh, for the European Union, you know, to, to think like this, you know, something who is, uh, you know, gather people. I, I think what uh, Jean-Michel Drip just said, I, I think is fantastic. And mixité, um, I'm not, I'm going to speak in English because it's easier for the audience. But I think, you know, we're not trying to define European culture in what we do. We're trying to, in a sense, I said, uh, I quoted Placido Domingo, it's about, Um, you know, encouraging that diversity we have. Um, and I think that for me is really, really important. And, and that all too often, as I said, is seen as a limiting factor and not as an asset. It's seen as a liability. It should be an asset. But we have to work with that to help people mm -hmm. understand it and embrace it. And I think mm -hmm. that's a challenge we all face. Any question from the audience here? Uh, the, the clock is ticking towards uh, lunchtime. Uh, just give me a, a sign if you have any, any question. It's also possible to ask a question to, to the six other who was uh, here just before, if you have something to ask them. Uh, yes, please. The micro. Um, would, you, would you apply the, the American concept of melting pot uh, to Europe? Um, this is a question to Helen. Would you consider that France is potentially a melting pot, melting pot of culture in the, in the meaning of American culture, as uh, it was described uh, before the Trump era, of course? But um, w would it be a political message you would... Maybe your French colleagues are better placed to, to answer that. <laughs> ah, it's more a question about Europe here. Yeah. It's more about a question about Europe. Uh, well, melting pot or diversity, you know, I think uh, that's, uh, that's another question, another discussion in a sense in itself. Um, and um, it's always the challenge between may maybe the mutual understanding meant by melting pot, but also having diversity. I think, I think it's important somehow to strike the balance there between enjoying diversity and also being open to other people's culture. And having a fil conducteur about uh, European identity and European construction. Yeah, I mean, we're not European identity. I would define along sharing values, human rights, openness, uh, that sort of thing. I think um, maybe I'm, I'm not French. Um, so it, I think I'm not trying to define, define identity. I think it's, it's a, I find it difficult to define my own identity sometimes, let alone. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And you want to add something on that? Oh. Well, just that um, uh, I assume it's, it's quite difficult to make a, a very um, comparison between American history and French or European history. You know, each, each history of, of its composition of immigration is, is very um, personal and not being relative to another one. But there is one, there is one point which is very different, is uh, also the way we... Um, communities are living together in, in France or in America and our also French um, links to religion, what you can do in America, what you can't do in France, our uh, relation to la laicity, I don't know what you say that. Okay. Secularism, secularism yeah, which secular. is also a, a big part of how um, American communities have been living together and the way we try to assimilate or we want to have assimilation to be able to live together. But um, <laughs> just to say it's a very complex question. Mm. <laughs> Any other question here? Any? Yeah, you have one, Agnes. I have one for the European Union. Um, how do you uh, find the 
uh, is that a challenge or how do you resolve this uh, very big challenge of uh, crossing two models, one of the more from uh, the United States with uh, multiculturalism, which is quite uh, famous in Europe too. And what we are very often defend on this French model with a cross-cultural uh, dialogue, intercultural dialogue, which means that people are part of a nation of French people and not necessarily bring back to their origin. That is a question I think that's probably beyond my capacity to answer <laughs> as, a, as, as a diplomat. I think Europe is also 20 at the moment. I'm British, it's at the moment 28 countries, soon to be 27, which have different answers to your question as well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but just to say, I think it's an interesting fact that Norway has decided to be part of this European cultural um, activities, Creative Europe, and I can find you projects from uh, Lofoten to uh, um, the south of Norway, the mayor said it, and I think that's very vibrant and it's very important that we use that as a way of uh, showing Norwegian culture to Europe, but also vice versa. Yeah. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm not, I can't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think uh, we are uh, 10 minutes after the schedule. Uh, it's lunchtime. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this panel. Uh, and it's uh, as we heard. It's big question, it's complex themes, it's, uh, it's, uh, so we've just been touching it a little bit, but we will continue to discuss this uh, during the day and tomorrow. If you go to the canteen and you say you're on the conference, you get 30% reduction on the food. Be back uh, quarter past one. <laughs>